Hello, I'm Kelly and welcome to my Floss Tube channel, Animal Instinct. It's the 22nd of November, 2022 today. We're about a week away from summer and I'm sitting here in a jumper. <laughs> anyway, today is a special edition. I'm not doing a regular stitching update. Today I'm going to be talking all about my 2020 Be Well and Stitch cross stitch quilt. I'm not really sure what to call it. <laughs> If you've seen my channel before, you will have seen the quilt. Possibly I've shown it a couple of times since I finished it. Um, but if you're not familiar with it, um, this is it in its entirety. It consists of about 30 cross-stitched patterns, um, all sewn together to make it into this quilt. And it's become a really nice keepsake of a really awful, uh, significant, I guess, time um, in our lives. And I'm hoping that um, by sharing this with you today, it might inspire you to do something similar. Um, it's just a bit of a different way to finish off um, a number of cross stitch pieces together. Uh, so I hope you enjoy this. Um, let me know in the comments what you think. What I'll do is I'll divide the video into three parts. Um, and I'll pop the timestamps in the description box below. So part one, I'll give you a bit of an overview of how I came to stitch all the pieces. Um, most of them were found through the Be Well and Stitch hashtag. So I'll also have a bit of a talk about um, how that came uh, into being. And I do want to thank a few people who generously shared some information about that with me. So it was um, Deb Wilson, uh, Michelle Garrett from Bendy Stitchy Designs, Beth Twist, and Stephanie Schaffner. So they all helped me sort of piece together um, the origins of Be Well and Stitch. And it certainly evolved from what it initially was intended to be. Um, in the second section, I will go through each of the pieces. I'll do a close up and show you um, each of the pieces. I'll let you know their names, the designer, the materials I used, everything like that. So if you're interested in stitching them, you can go on um, Hunt them down if they're still available. I don't know if they're all still available. A lot of them were free of charge or gifted um, patterns. Um, I don't know if that's still the case so you might have to do your own research but they'll all be numbered and they'll be um, all listed down in the description box below. If you have questions feel free to get in touch. I won't share the patterns with you but um, I can give you some pointers on trying to track them down if, if there's any any tricky ones. Um, in that section, I'll just say now, I had a lot of company. One of my cats in particular um, was very interested. Uh, he loves this quilt. <laughs> um, and he just kept sitting right in front of the camera as I was filming. <laughs> so many times I've cut all of that out, except for one. So where I'm talking about Sarah stitching mummy's beautiful temperature tree pattern, I just let him do his own thing which you'll see. I do know there are some Reggie fans out there so I've put together a little a clip at the end of some of the footage I had to cut. <laughs> um, once I've shown all the pieces in depth then the last section I'm just going to have a chat about how I put it together as a quilt. So it's not a tutorial. Um, I'm not an accomplished sewer or quilter <laughs> but um, you know I'm happy to give things a go so I'll just talk you through how I how it came to came to come together makes sense um if there's quilters out there watching you might be horrified at that section because i i certainly didn't follow any uh, proper techniques <laughs> but hey i have a finished product so yay <laughs> um something i learnt through this whole process was uh to let go of my perfectionist tendencies i do like things to be perfect if they can be as close to as possible and if I had stuck with that I never would have finished this quilt so I had to let that go and I had to be okay with imperfections and that's been a really good thing for me um, to realize so yeah definitely not perfect but I really love it and I hope you enjoy this video Let's cast our minds back to the very start of 2020. That's almost three years ago, which is pretty incredible. Uh, here in Australia, we were in the depths of the most horrific bushfire season we'd seen for quite some time, widespread right across the country. 
um, there were fires around my local area um, and I found myself helping out in a koala hospital treating local koalas who had been injured or orphaned in those fires. And definitely everyone, you know, would have thought that that would be the significant event of 2020. And lo and behold, just a couple of months later in the midst of a global pandemic. So won't go into the details we all know we all know how it happened how it panned out it was a really worrying time especially at the start before there was a vaccine and, and treatments um, I was at home very fortunate to be able to continue working from home I had this beautiful hobby of cross stitch that kept me company um, and I know so many of my colleagues and friends not crafty really really struggled being at home not able to go out and do things so very grateful for my hobby um, and all of a sudden I had all this extra time to spend on it so I think if you know my stitching style I tend to pick big patterns and I did finish my B by Lorna Lane um, fairly early on in 2020 um, which is great uh, Around about that time, don't recall exactly, I started seeing the hashtag on Instagram, be well and stitch. And these were free patterns gifted by cross stitch designers. Um, and every day there were more and more coming out. And I was really intrigued and they're really nice, generally pretty small patterns. Um, and I started collecting them. <laughs> so, I tried to find out a bit more about how Be Well and Stitch sort of um, came to be. I'm just going to pull up my notes so I don't say anything incorrectly. And it could be wrong, <laughs> but um, it appears that early on in the pandemic, so around March 2020, um, a group of local needlework store owners and cross stitch designers who were also just friends were chatting um, about the situation they found themselves in um, and they came up with this really nice idea to um, provide free patterns to the stitching community but also encourage stitchers to you know get their supplies from their local needlework stores to support small businesses because like all small businesses at that time it was really concerning about um, the impacts of all of these lockdowns and and everything else that was happening so initially um, there were free patterns and, and you sort of gently encouraged to support your local needlework stores. Um, I think Beth Twist described it really nicely as kind of like a virtual wellness hug um, for the whole stitching community because it also gave us stitches, things to do um, that, you know, didn't cost much money also. It then, um, I guess people just saw it and, and ran with it and it evolved into this massive massive sort of beast I just looked up the hashtag on Instagram and there are 17.9 thousand posts that use that hashtag so not all of them are sort of specifically be well and stitch in this context but a big a big portion of them probably are um, which is just amazing so it kind of morphed from um, encouraging you to support your local stores um, but then you know as time went by people lost their jobs and they weren't able to work um, and they didn't necessarily have the disposable funds to be buying stuff and those of us who could um, the postal services were really disrupted as well so then it sort of turned into the pat you'd see the patterns coming out were more designed to be stitched from stash um, and it was a nice you know topical you know conversation start a um, really nice thing to chat about with your stitchy friends and I just loved it I think I downloaded my or saved my first one pretty early on I think the end of March um, and I'll show you my the first one that I started was the Barbara Anna the key this one and I started that in early April so I think if my records are correct, that was my starting point. That was really fun. I'd never done a Barbara Anna before and just really enjoyed stitching it. It wasn't the first one I finished though. The first one I finished was this one.
This is by, um, you can see here, I'll explain why they're there <laughs> later. Um, Arlene Cohen works by ABC. So it's really simple. It's got crosses and it's got black work. I stitched this from Stash um, using, I bought a couple of bags of little scraps of linens and aiders from Jay's X Stitch um, for ornaments. So I used that and I used, I think they're silks for you. I'll talk about this more in the next section. But I started this and I finished it um, the next day. And because I said I stitch big things, I don't get too many finishes. I love that feeling of finishing something because it felt like the world had kind of was paused as we, you know, tried to work out what was going to happen. Um, you know, this was pre-vaccine and everything like that. So it felt really, it felt like I accomplished something, <laughs> actually finishing something. And I got addicted to that feeling. So from there, I just started stitching more and more of these patterns. Collecting, collecting the patterns kind of became a hobby in itself. I would um, look up the hashtag every day and see what new, what new patterns had been released and I was saving them and definitely its own hobby <laughs> as well as stitching them. <laughs> um, I have so many and unfortunately I just didn't get to stitch all of the ones I would have liked to have stitched um, but I do have <laughs> plenty of other projects that I do actually want to finish as well. In the end I was sort of accumulating this little pile of finishes. I didn't know what I was going to do with them um, but I decided to give myself a deadline and I decided by the end of the year, so by the end of 31st of December 2020, no more Be Well and Stitch patterns. I'd done enough, you know, I'd spent enough time working on them. Um, and it was funny, I just, I created this like triage folder in my folder of Be Well and Stitch patterns. And I kept going in and moving things in and out of there, like the ones in there were the ones I definitely had to stitch. And that kept changing as well, especially as the, the clock started ticking and we're getting towards the end of the year. And that last week of the year, I don't work. Um, and it's usually a pretty quiet time at home. And I remember, I just, I, yeah, I just did be well and stitch patterns for the whole week. <laughs> Desperate to try and finish them as many as I could off. The idea of a quilt came to me later in the year. Um, I'd come up with, I'd thought about doing a, I know some people are doing like journals um, where they're, they're sticking smalls onto paper, I guess, um, or cardstock and making little stitchy journals. And I really like that idea. Um, I tend to like make things hard for myself. And I came up with this idea of doing a stitchy journal that was all stitched. So like a fabric one that you'd turn the pages. Um, but I did change my mind. I decided that was a little bit uh, too much work. <laughs> um, and then I thought, well, why don't I stitch them together as a, like kind of like a collage and then turn them into a bit of a decorative quilt. So that's how that kind of came um, came to me, I guess. Uh, and then that was a, a process in itself, putting it all together. I'll talk about that at the end. I think that's everything I wanted to mention, um, in this section. So yeah, let's jump into part two. This is the only cross stitch piece on the quilt that I actually stitched in 2021, not 2020. What happened was I was, you know, placing all the blocks down, trying to organize them into some sort of, you know, square or rectangular shape roughly. And it was just clear to me that I was missing one piece. I needed one more piece. So I kind of quickly threw this together. As you can see, I didn't actually center it <laughs> properly on the fabric. Oops, um, but that's fine. So this is on a piece of 28 count even weave called Spring Bouquet and it was from a Sassy Devil um, pouch, like a mystery pouch. Um, the, the thread is a silks for you. I think it was possibly from their advent or 12 days of Christmas or whatever it was that they did. Um, but basically this piece to me represents the fires of that year. So you've got the orange glow, which you could see from my house. 
um, and, the, and the red there. This is called loo paper. Everyone will remember the, the great loo paper shortage of 2020. It's by Jaeger and Yarn. It's on 28 count opal cashel linen in Amatentia from Chromatic Alchemy. Not sure how you say that. Um, and it's just stitched with three colors of DMC. I completed this one over 11 days. It was a bit uh, monotonous, all that white, <laughs> but it's a good memory. Red Berries by Irina Ogi. I got this pattern from her on Instagram. I believe I sent her a DM and she sent the pad to me. I think that's how it worked. Um, there are quite a few like that. This is on a piece of 18 count scrap Ada. I think it was from the little bag of scraps that I got from Jay's X Stitch. And it's just used in DMC. I just thought it was really, really sweet. This is the self isolating bat. I think a lot of people did this one. It's from Night Spirit Studio. It's stitched on 28 count cashew linen in Owl's Dark Magic, again by Chromatic Alchemy. It's an amazing fabric. I did find it a little bit tricky to stitch on um, the, the opalescent on the dark fabric. I don't know, it was just hard. There's definitely some personalizations in this one. <laughs> um, I started it on Bat Appreciation Day and it took me about seven days to complete. This is The Plague Nurse by Night Spirit Studio, another popular one. Beautiful design. It's stitched on 16 count Black Ada and the called for DMC. And I completed this one over four days. This was the very last piece I stitched. It's the Be Well and Stitch Harmsa design by Michelle Garrett of Bendy Stitchy Designs. It's stitched on 28 count even weave in spring bouquet from Sassy Devil um, in their, one of their mystery pouches. Same fabric I used to stitch the 2020 uh, and I used a combination of silks for you. On the left, on that beautiful purple fabric, is Be Well and Sing from Art Mishka Cross Stitch, designed by Anna Gutova. And this is a nod to very early on, uh, there was footage, one of the early lockdowns, I think, in Italy, footage of people coming out onto their balconies in apartment buildings and singing. It was just beautiful. Um, so that's a nod to that. And then on the right is a really fun one. There's no place like home from Charmageddon. Um, sorry, the Be Well and Sing is stitched on 14 count. Picture this plus Thistle Ada. I just love that one. Um, and use DMC. And there's no place like home is stitched with also picture this plus Ada it's on 16 count and it's called fresco also stitched with DMC this is my first ever Joan Elliott finish and this is called for you from me by Joan Elliott I think this might be available in her Facebook group and I'm pretty sure that's where I got it from. I stitched it on 18 count Ada in Da Vinci by Picture This Plus. It's a really pretty sort of light purple lavender sort of color. Um, and used the called for DMC. That one took me four days to do and there's quite a few French knots in there. This is the Be Well Moon Crystal by Wild Violet Cross Stitch. It's on a piece of 16 count Ada. It's by Picture This Plus, but I don't have the name of it anymore. <laughs> it's stitched 
using DMC and this is available through her Gumroad account. I did this one, I started and finished this one in one day. This is Let's Stay Home by Satsuma Street. It's on 16 Count Ada and it's Bashful by Picture This Plus. I think you can just see that it's a very, very light hint of pink. Um, it's a very bright pattern too. <laughs> uh, and I finished this one over five days. But I think I had it as a whip for quite a while. There was quite a lot of stitching in there. This is one of my favourites. I just can't believe how well the face turned out. This was the 2020 Stiopcha Loan stitch along. Not really like their normal stitch alongs. This was very much um, just do what you've got at home. Uh, no, I don't think there were teams. I don't really remember. But um, anyway, it was the Stiop Shalong um, of 2020. And they just, uh, they did give you some suggested colorways, but they also sa said just pick six contrasting colors, one really light and one really dark. Um, so I just, you know, went through my stash and picked six browns, not knowing what it was going to be. Um, and I did, I'll just see if I can come in a little bit closer. Once I realized who it was, <laughs> I did give him blue eyes. And that's on an angle. There we go. And it's just on 16 count antique white hater, I think. This is one of two Christmas cat ornaments I stitched by Lindy Stitches. It's called Cats Love Christmas. I stitched it on 16 count Ada in Glacier by Picture This Plus and I did these, they're not really Be Well and Stitch themed but I did adopt Reggie in 2020 so um, I figure it was relevant to the year. On the left there I, looks a little odd but anyway I made it into Jemima, my other cat. In the middle there is Reggie wanting to be everyone's friend. And I needed to do a third cat, so that's an old cat, um, Tiana, who was a Persian that I had um, quite a few years ago. Now. Here's the other Lindy Stitches Christmas cat ornament. It's on the same fabric as the other one, so 16 Count Ada in Glacier by Picture This Plus, which is a nice mint green. This one's called Accident Free Days. Um, I stitched the Cats Love Christmas in one day and I stitched this one in two days and that is definitely Reggie and there is no way I could possibly have a Christmas tree in my house with this cat. <laughs> this is one of the first ones I did. It's called the Be Well Mini Bouquet. It's by Jeanette Douglas. And it's on a piece of scrap linen from Jay's X Stitch. I think it's somewhere between 32 and 36 count. And I just used my own DMC colors. And I know this is one of the early ones I did because I put her um, kind of her logo um, in. You can see here there's the J and the D and that's the needle. So it's like the needle and thread. I did not keep that up. <laughs> I realized I was making a whole lot more work for myself than was necessary. So a couple of them have the designers logos in them but not many. This is the witchy stitches. This is Boo Sheet. Very cute little ghost. Little coronavirus at the top. I stitched this on the same piece of fabric I stitched the self-isolating bat on, it's 28 count opal cashew linen in Owl's Dark Magic by Chromatic Alchemy. Stitched it using the Call for DMC I'm pretty sure and I did it in one day. This is Be Well 
by Heart in Hand. It's on a piece of 32 count even weave. Um, it's a scrap from Jay's X Stitch and I stitched it in one day. This is Be Well by The Drawn Thread. It's on another scrap of 32 count even weave from Jay's X Stitch. It's in a really light purple. It was all just crosses with some satin stitches as well and I just love those bees. I thought they were really great. This was also an early one because you can see I attempted to stitch the Drawn Thread logo. <laughs> Not very well. This is absolutely adorable. It's just called Bat and it's from Tatiana Vittoria. I am going to guess that this was a, another uh, Instagram, you know, direct message sort of um, request. If I can find it, I'll have her Instagram handle in the description box below. It's stitched on 18 Count Ada by Jodie Redesigns Designs in Wicked Witch, which is a really great, lightly... Um, Variegated, I guess, or mottled, um, grey. Really cute. This is a mystery stitch along from Lindy Stitches. It's on 28 count even weave in spring bouquet. It's um, the same piece that the Hamsa and the 2020 piece was stitched on. Um, it was from a Sassy Devil pouch. I think I used combination of threads and I like to think she's riding her Komodo dragon. This one the sewing is a little bit <laughs> uh, off when I pieced it together in the quilt I just about cut the tail off. <laughs> it just made it in. This is the COVID Christmas Snowman by Beverly Street Shop on Etsy. It's stitched in 16 count on 16 count Ada in Icon by Picture This Plus. It's very similar to the Glacier that I did the cat ornament ones from Lindy Stitches, but it's a little bit more blue than green. And I finished that in three days. This is Just Stitch by Works by ABC. It's on a piece of 36 count scrap linen from Jay's X Stitch and it's stitched using Silks For You. As you can see in the bottom right there, I popped in the designer's name, so it was one of the early ones. I did this one in two days um, and yeah, you can see I used a variegated um, Silks For You thread for that internal um, black work. This one had basically no margins. I'd be horrified to see. I can't remember when I was putting the quilt together. I had to, the um, seams are very, very narrow to fit that in. Thankfully, I think it's okay. This is another favorite. This is the key by Barbara Anna Designs. It's on 18 count Ada in Green Dragon by Jodie Ree Designs. It's a really pretty fabric. And I used most of the cold for DMC. I think this was a fairly early one I did as well. And I finished it in three days. I did really want to do her other companion piece, The Light, which had the fox, uh, but I just didn't get there. This is the Temperature Tree by Sarah the Stitching Mummy. You can find this on Etsy along with a lot of other temperature uh, themed pieces. So each leaf represents the maximum temperature in my city. Um, I started... <laughs> oh my God. Reggie? Are you quite okay?
This is a temperature tree by Sarah Stitch and Mummy. You can buy this pattern on Etsy and she's got other, other temperature themed patterns as well. Each leaf represents the maximum temperature in my city. Starting in January down here, working our way around. So we have summer and then the cooler months up here. Um, I've got a cat trying desperate to sit on this quilt. Oh my goodness, chat. Seriously. Anyway, so the, <laughs> the leaves on that range from we had that year we had temperatures like maximum temperatures anywhere from 10 to 43 degrees celsius and i did convert that into fahrenheit 50 to 110 degrees fahrenheit and i worked on that for about 39 days over the course of 2020 it's stitched on a piece of brown linen 32 count linen that was gifted to us at the mitigong stitches retreat I just can't get him off. He just keeps coming back. <laughs> He's claiming this. Sorry, there is the <laughs> there is the temperature tree, minus the cat. This one's called "I Will Cut You" by Lucy Beam. Love in stitches. I love the sarcasticness <laughs> of this piece. Um, it's quite large, so it's um, sort of going down from top to bottom vertically on the quilt. It's stitched on a piece of 20 count Bellana even weave, which has a very, very loose weave. I did not really enjoy stitching on this at all, on the fabric anyway. I'll see if I can come in. I'm sure if you can see. Anyway, I used the Cold Four colours. Love the look of the scissors there. And this one might seem out of place, but if any of you worked in customer service sort of roles in 2020, I think you can probably agree with me that the way people interacted with each other changed a lot. Um, People's true natures came out. <laughs> Just leave it at that. <laughs> um, and by the end of the year, I was feeling pretty fed up. And I just, this piece really spoke to me. <laughs> this is one of several pieces. Um, I think they were all on one piece, but I cut them up and sort of spread them throughout the quilt. Um, it's we come through together and it's from mybobbin.com they're all stitched on a piece of 28 cashel linen in June by Chromatic Alchemy I used silks, various silks for you to stitch them and hopefully I'm popping in pictures of the other ones I did mess up, I think it was on the Spanish one, again when I was piecing the quilt together it went a bit wonky <laughs> I cut off a little bit of the stitching oh well <laughs> It's all a learning process. So it's in English, French, German, Spanish, Italian, and I think Russian. And I decided um, to add an Asian language in. And the only Asian language I know is Indonesian. So I stitched the same um, text in Indonesian, so it translates, that's Kami Bertahan Bersama, translates as we arrive together, I think, from memory. This is called 2020, it's by Love for Cross Stitch on Etsy. It's stitched on 40 count linen in Taiko by Picture This Plus. And the threads, I think this is a Jodie Redesigns thread, and this is a Silks for You. I did this one in four days, and <laughs> I think it sums up the year pretty well. This is actually on the back of the quilt, 
And if you keep watching, I do have a bit of a funny story. I made a pretty bad mistake putting this one together and I just decided to go with it because <laughs> it was too late to fix anything. Um, but it does have a, it's got a little hidden panel with some Velcro. So it's on the back. Ta-da! <laughs> yeah, keep watching. I'll let you know what I did. Um, and I just couldn't bring myself to fix it. So now I'm just going to have a bit of a chat about how um, it came together to be a finished product from all those individual pieces into the final quilt. Um, I... I don't consider myself a very creative person. I, I actually like to follow a pattern. So this was a little bit out of my comfort zone. And like I said at the start, I had to let those perfectionist tendencies go, um, which was good for me, I think. Um, but I had this like kind of vision in my mind that there'd be like a scrap sort of collage all sewn together with some sort of unifying fabric. Um, and then I wanted a bright and colorful um, border for a couple of reasons one is that I mean it's a really sad um, subject really isn't it We're talking about a global pandemic and all those lives lost um, and continue, you know we're still going with it um, so I wanted something a little bit happy I also um, wanted to bring like there's so many different uh, colors in the in the all the patterns whether it's the fabrics or the threads I've used um, there's so many different colors, so I wanted something colorful to bring all of that together. So I went along to my local fabric um, store if you're in Adelaide. I went to Trisha's Discount Fabrics. Um, it's just off South Road in Melrose Park, kind of near Spotlight. And it's this huge warehouse. Um, I swear some of that fabric must be like decades old and she keeps getting new stuff. So she's got plenty of current fabrics too. Um, and it was overwhelming <laughs> trying to decide what to do. Um, I think I'll pop off. I've got a few photos as we go and I've just got them here to remind myself. Um, before I had gone there, I had laid out um, as a rough idea of how it might look. Um, and you can see it did not turn out anything like this, um, but I'll just pop this in here. But that was sort of my first my first layout I guess did not go with that fabric at all <laughs> didn't work for it so I knew that didn't work but I didn't know what was going to work and so I just took a few of the pieces and kind of auditioned them at this shop and couldn't decide <laughs> it was really really hard in the end um, I took the pieces I showed the pieces to the store owner Trish and she immediately found the black and white polka dots which is what I went with um, I wasn't sure to start with, but actually it's perfect for it. So putting this together, I'll just say right here actually that a lot of this was done at my mum's house, um, mainly for the moral support. <laughs> she didn't do any of the work, but she is a quilter. She's um, done a lot of sewing and she was able to give me some tips and support. <laughs> um, so thanks mum. Um, so got home with all this fabric, wanted to be, before I started joining anything, wanted to be 100% happy with the, the layout. Um, so I'll pop another photo in. I started putting them, um, I laid them all out, sorry, on her bed. Um, and it changed like that first photo, it was kind of like a portrait rectangle, which is what I thought, but then it kind of changed into more of a square. And I definitely found that there was one, I needed one more block. And I, I mentioned that in the previous section. So I sewed the fabric on um, for that. That was going to be the top left um, and did the stitching, the 2020 stitching later. Um, but then I just cut out strips of the polka dot fabric. It wasn't because all the pieces are different <laughs> dimensions and shapes. Um, I couldn't just use one uniform width of strip. Uh, it wasn't that easy <laughs> so I cut a few different widths and it was a bit of a like mental exercise um, to try and get it to work so I just have to have a look at them laid out work out okay if I stitch that one to that one 
then they can both be attached to that one underneath. And I just had to do it like that. I did it in blocks. Um, so I do have some photos of that um, process. I also, um, will, there'll be photos of my helpers, had helpers all along the way. And by the way, I would never have my uh, sewing machine going when the cat was that close either. Um, that took me quite a while to to finish um, and so it wasn't it didn't always work out how I wanted so most of them just have the one strip between them but just because they are different sizes um, you do get some like that's got there's kind of four um, strips all converging there so you get this kind of um, scrappy effect um, but ultimately I needed the final piece to be, have straight edges, <laughs> four straight edges and four 90 degree corners if I could help it. <laughs> I have a photo of the final pieces all sewn together. I didn't get a, a shot of the, um, no. So I don't have a picture, but after I'd sewn all of those together, I did add one more uh, row or border of the black and white all the way around as you can see and then I, I made sure that was as square as possible it wasn't quite square <laughs> but I kind of budged it to make it work um, and then it was time to attach the colourful border now this fabric is um, kind of an ombre so it starts off quite sort of dark and bright I guess and then it fades. So I just had to be quite deliberate about joining them. I think if I joined bright with light, it would have really been obvious, but the brights um, are joined together and the lights are joined together and it's kind of a seamless transition that way. Whereas if I sort of joined that with that, it would have been more, a bit more abrupt. And so the um, quilt top was done, yay. Next up, time to make a quilt sandwich. So there's three layers to a quilt. You've got your, your quilt top that you're going to be looking at that's going to be up. You've got your backing, generally a quilting cotton. Some people use other things too. And then you've got some wadding or batting in the middle to give it a bit of substance. Um, and you know it gives it the, the warmth if you're going to use it actually as a real quilt which this one will not be used as <laughs> so I first of all had to do the the backing um, and I think I had to join yeah, I had to join two pieces of that fabric I decided to just go with the same colorful fabric um, I had to join two pieces to get a big enough square I also attached that last piece that I showed um, to the back I didn't want that on the front um, so I've taken the needle minders off so I won't show you but um, I just stitched that onto the back yeah onto the back before the quilt came together the panel though that that it um, that was done right at the end because I didn't want to accidentally quilt over it and not be able to open it up so also got a piece of um, I don't know, is it wadding or batting? Is there a difference? I don't know, the, the stuff that goes in the middle. <laughs> um, I've got a photo here. I cut it out a little bit bigger than needed um, and then trimmed it up so it was not, everything was nice and straight. So the point of quilting in a patchwork quilt is to join your three layers together so that you don't get any you know, of the fabric moving or bunching or anything like that. There's lots of different ways you can quilt a quilt. Um, you can do it by hand, which there was no way on earth I was going to do that because I'll never finish it. <laughs> um, you can do ties. 
Um, that's an older sort of technique that people still use, I think. Um, I don't really know much about that. Um, then you've got your machine quilting. You can pay someone um, to quilt your quilt and they'll probably use a big long arm, fancy professional machine. I think they dial in um, the, the pattern and sort of it just does it. <laughs> I'm sure there is some skill involved there too. Um, but I wasn't interested in doing that. I wanted to do it myself. So that came down to me um, doing machine quilting. Now I've done quilting in the ditch before, which is where you just follow the seam lines and you don't really see the, the quilting from the front. Um, but I didn't want to do that on this one. So um, I did some freehand, like using the machine and freehand quilting. So come to that shortly. But before that happens, you need to attach the three layers so they're really well attached and they're not going to slip and become sort of misaligned as, as you're quilting it. Um, so to do that you need safety pins. I had I had curved safety pins um, that supposedly make it a little bit easier to um, put through all three layers and my mum did help me with this section. We pinned it the first time and she was so fast and I was so slow. I really struggled with this. I found this one of the hardest bits actually. <laughs> and then I think we turned it over and most of mine hadn't gone through all three layers. <laughs> and I can't really remember why, but we ended up just taking them all out and doing it a second time. There was a problem with that too. I can't remember what it was. I think the fabric had slipped possibly. Um, you know, he's here because the quilt's in front of me. He wants to sit on it. So third time lucky, um, all my pins went through, yay. Um, now when I'd attached that piece for the back, um, I had done it so that the cross stitch piece was going to be at the top left, um, so the top left corner of the quilt when you looked at it from behind. Um, but when we flipped it over to check that my pins had gone through, <laughs> I had somehow switched around the backing fabric so that that cross stitch piece was now upside down um, in the bottom right of the quilt. And it doesn't really matter because it's at the back. It doesn't really doesn't matter. Um, but <laughs> I would have preferred that it was the right way up. I was completely over it that day. I didn't want to unpin everything just to turn that around. And I just decided, you know what? That is a review of a really topsy-turvy year. I'm just going to go with it. It's okay that it's upside down. <laughs> so that is upside down on the quilt and I'm okay with it. <laughs> I couldn't believe it when I turned it over. My heart sank and I thought, no, I can't, I can't. <laughs> so anyway, that's why it's fine. It was an, it was an upside down year anyway. Then it went away for a few months because I was quite intimidated by the thought of quilting it. <laughs> but finally rang up mum and said, right, let's organise this. She came up for a crafty afternoon um, and I had a bit of a practice. I liked a couple of different techniques. So one was um, meandering where you're just kind of like moving it around and you're trying not to let the stitches like cross over each other. I quite like that and then also sort of a loopy loopy one where you have little yeah circles um I quite like that too so I practiced those I could have kept practicing but I just decided no just do it <laughs> otherwise it'll never get done and so I started in the middle I wanted to quilt all of the um this fabric I wanted to quilt that because some of the cross stitch pieces like especially my temperature tree is quite large and there's nothing holding the three layers together there. So I wanted to make sure all of the, um, all of this fabric was quilted down and anchored down to the back. Um, it was pretty slow going to start with. And I mean, it was pretty hard because some of those strips are really narrow, but I did do it. All of the black and white polka dot fabric is quilted. I used a dark fabric uh, cotton so you couldn't see it um, and I used that cotton on the top and bottom bobbin of the machine which means you can see the same colour on the back. You can be smart and um, if your machine's set up right you can have 
like a different color cotton for the back, the back but mine didn't really bother me. What it means though is you can see my stitching <laughs> on the back. Uh, you can very much see that I'm a beginner. Um, but that's fine, it's all part of it. So, is that showing up? Hang on, oh there, <laughs> it would help if I got it in the right position. There you go. So there's my loops. And let me find some, something else. I guess, yeah, there's a, that, that's not too bad. <laughs> uh, loops on a narrow band of black and white fabric. And then I had a bit more room to play with here. <laughs> so once I'd finished the black and white, we changed the cotton over to a, I think it's like a light blue, but it looks like white. It is a pale blue. Um, so I could quilt the, the border here. Um, I had a bit more room to move and you can see the stitching on the front. Um, and <laughs> I'll show you, it's, it's like, it's not, like I said, it's not perfect, but it's fine. Uh, you can see those white stitches, loops and all sorts. Sometimes I'd start going too fast and my mum would be saying, Kelly, slow down. And I'd be like, I can't stop. <laughs> She'd say, stop. And I'd stop and I'd put the needle down and just <laughs> refocus, start off slowly again and then speed up. And that just happened over and over. So... <laughs> Um, but got it all quilted. So next up was binding. So the binding brings the raw edges, the three raw edges of your cooked sandwich together and just finishes it off nicely. You can see that's not even. My binding is <laughs> far from perfect. Again, fine. So I do have some photos. I, um, you can do binding lots of different ways. I machine sewed it onto the front um, and then I hand sewed it on the back. So, um, I've got Reggie hair on this, of course. So that's machine sewn on. You can't see the stitching at all. And then That's the back, so that is hand stitched. And again, you can't really see it. So I was really careful with the corners um, so that I got really nice um, crisp corners. Like That's as good as I could do. Um, and then I found the act of hand sewing that binding on the back really soothing and relaxing. I really enjoyed it. And as you can see, I had friends helping me. I definitely made mistakes. I think I've got a photo of the seam ripper and behind that you can see, I think that was actually the front of the quilt. I'd actually missed um, some of the raw edges of the quilt when I'd sewn it. So I had to unpick. Thankfully I didn't have to unpick the whole thing. Um, so yeah, so got the binding all done. The last part of the process was the panel, the hidden panel. This one. So I, I'm just reminding myself what I did. That's right. <laughs> I, for some reason, was going to blanket stitch it on. And I found, when I was looking for photos, I found video, I totally forgotten this. I filmed myself reminding myself how to do blanket stitch. I've not done that in a long time. And in fact, it's a suture um, technique. <laughs> we call it forward interlocking and I did use it on occasion when I was in vet practice on animals 
and for some reason like an old surgical kit all sterile was like handy and I've got footage of me like trying to remember how to do blanket stitch with my surgical <laughs> instruments but I just whip stitched I whip stitched it in place so you can't you can't really see um, um, how it's been attached it's kind of hidden and then on the bottom I used velcro which really hasn't worked very well um, it's sticky but as you can see it's not very sticky so I sewed it down and actually I had a huge amount of trouble getting the needle through the velcro dot and so that surgical kit came in handy so here's a handy dandy tip if you have access to medical people oh you can probably just buy them online actually um, needle drivers so I don't have them to hand but needle drivers are what are used when you're suturing tissue um, you clamp them on to your needle and you use them to drive them through the tissue and <laughs> because I'd randomly been doing that blank playing mucking around with that blanket stitch or forward interlocking suture technique um, I had my needle drivers out and I used them to force the needle through the velcro um, strips and it worked really really well so from that I realized that you know when you're working on full coverage pieces and the it's it gets tight on the back and sometimes it's hard to uh, poke your needle through under that like weave it under um, other stitches and pull it through needle drivers if you push it through and then just grasp the needle with your needle drivers and pull them through works really well so that was a little <laughs> um, trick I guess I figured out when I was trying to attach this velcro um, so that's the patch or the, the panel which you can't see from a distance when I dropped this quilt off to my local show um, <laughs> I completely forgot that this was even in the quilt and as I was walking away it just came to me and I thought oh I wonder what the judges will think if they'll see it and what they'll think of that little back Easter egg <laughs> um, but it just does that so yeah that's that so I think that's everything um, I hope you found this interesting useful let me know if you liked it if you want to stitch any of those pieces if you have questions feel free to ask I won't send you patterns but I can maybe help you um, try and locate them um, if I can I might not be able to either um, I'll be back in a couple of weeks for a regular stitching update um, so hopefully we'll see you all then thanks so much for watching bye Um, rectangle or square <laughs> seriously not helpful Reggie in my city um, I started Reggie, are you quite okay? Right, in January down here, working our way around. So we have summer and then the cooler months up here. Um, I've got a cat trying desperate to sit on this quilt. Oh my goodness, chat. Seriously. Anyway, so the, <laughs> the leaves on that range from, we had, that year we had I just can't get him off, he just keeps coming back <laughs> He's claiming this Reg? No. This is called This Is Boo Sheet by the Witchy Stitcher. It 
It's on a piece of 28 count casual linen in Owl's Dark Magic by Chromatic Alchemy. Same piece I stitched the self-isolating bat on. Um, go with that. <laughs> it's in DMC and I finished it in one day. Seriously. <laughs> Would you look at this? Reggie, you good? You get comfy. <laughs> oh, my 